All right, I'm going to call this meeting now to order. It's The time is now 6.31. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the UMA annual meeting. My God, actually, this is much easier to do this when I can't see everybody, but I can <laughs> see everybody's smiling faces in the audience, so I'm going to do my best acting skills not to, whoops, do my best acting skills not to get nervous. My name is Emmanuel Marsh. For those who don't know me, I am the interim president over at UMA, and I would like to welcome you tonight, and thank you all for being here. With that being said, the meeting has been called to order at 631. We are going to move on to the second agenda item, which is approval of the minutes from our August meeting. Um, has anybody had a chance? I look over to my board over here. Does anybody have any, uh, does anybody, I should say, want any um, time to read over the minutes? If not, I will entertain any motions at this time. Okay, on Brian's motion, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Jonathan. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. The uh, August minutes have been adopted. Now we're going to move on to agenda item number three, which is the board president update, which is me. So you guys get to listen to me ramble on for a few minutes. And so with that being said, um, <coughs> You know, first I would like to recognize the, uh, I did see some elected officials in here. I know I saw Gary, Mayor Gary Christensen here earlier. I am looking at former Mayor Ed Lucy over here, former Councilor at Large Greg Lucy, newly elected to Ward 5, my good friend Ari Taylor over here. So I do want to recognize that in the room and say thank you to those in attendance. So what a year this was. Um, originally when I first ran to uh, be part of the, uh, I guess, executive committee or this part of uh, UMA, I had originally started as vice president, uh, trying to learn the ropes, hopefully one day maybe being in this position, not thinking that I'd be standing up here right now, but <laughs> life happens to take you in a funny direction, and here I am as the interim. Um, we got a lot done this year. We tied up a lot of loose ends, Tina and I, um, tied up a lot of things that needed to be done. Glad to have gotten that, um, you know, glad to have gotten that done. We were able to renegotiate Tina's contract and keep her here for another, I believe, three years, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. We gave you enough tape. Sorry. We're going to go into negotiating your contract. Yeah, go. Sorry. We're going yeah, we're going into, and hopefully we can. Excuse my nerves. And that was a slip. -up. That was a Freudian slip, I should say, right? <laughs> so looking into the future, one thing that, uh, as tonight, as you can see that we're streaming, uh, one thing that I'm actually really excited about is the fact that we actually now stream all of our UMA meetings so that the community at whole can actually see what we talk about, which I think is fascinating. Obviously, as a former elected official myself, I always think that seeing what goes on in your community and being able to, you know, if you're not there, uh, if you can't uh, join that meeting in real time, at least you can go back and see what's going on and you can be kept in the loop of what's, you know, what the uh, committees are always talking about. And so I'm very excited that we're introducing that. Obviously, and I should say, and also in addition, as a way to recruit people to join our UMA board so that when you hear me or you see me approach anybody in this community or anybody who's sitting at this table to ask anybody, you know, to join, that, um, you know, you can always go back and say, hey, instead of saying, well, what does UMA do? This is what we do. This is what we talk about. It's, it's right out there for you to see. So very exciting. Um, you know, and one of the things I've, I've always wanted to keep working on is trying to give everybody a chance to have a, a voice in the community active in UMA. So whether that being a board member, to an appointed seat, to an elected seat, or even joining on to our subcommittees um, and having uh, community participation that way. I, I think I'm not the only one who shares in this. I'd like to believe that everybody else that's part of UMA, the organization, board members, staff, that we can only continue to grow once we have everybody's input, right? And we can only get better from there. And so with that being said, I think that that's something that moving towards the future, that would like to see more of that and continue to keep building upon that. And uh, lastly, for my um, little president update, I'd like to say thank you to our uh, outgoing members that uh, have termed out. We'll be sad to uh, see some of them leave, but we're also excited to have our new members come in and on board as well. And, um, you know, some big shoes to fill, but I think that, uh, you know, the foundation has been laid and we can only build upon it. And, um, you know, and, I, and I'm excited to see where the future goes. And hopefully I can remove the interim label off myself and continue to serve as the president. Um, and I also have some big shoes to fill in as well as uh, people who presided in this position before me. And so I hope that 
I can live up to the expectation and also build upon the foundation that has been uh, laid before me, and I can continue to, uh, to build upon that. All right, Whew. with that being said, <laughs> I'm gonna move on to the next agenda item we have, and our next agenda item is the executive director report, and I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Tina. step on this step. <laughs> Accessibility, right? Uh, thank you, sir. You want to stand up here next to me the whole time? That's that's okay. That's all right. You can stand up here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight at our annual meeting. I greatly appreciate that you're all here. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank our outstanding volunteer board members for their continued dedication and support of our organization. The work that each of you put in is so vital to the sustainability of UMA and is greatly appreciated. <clears throat> yeah, let's give a little bit of a round. Thank you. I'm gonna put this guy over here. Um, I also want to thank. Uh, I'd also like to thank the amazing team here at UMA, who are, some of them are hidden back in the control room, some of them are hidden in the audience, but you can't figure out which ones it is, <laughs> right? Um, without whom, none of the past year's accomplishments I'm about to tell you about would have been possible. Each team member's passion, creativity, and skills enhance and expand the organization's services to our community, and I am so thankful to work alongside each of them. And speaking of the UMA team, I would like to introduce our new civic engagement specialist. She's way back in the room, Aaliyah Dominguez. Aaliyah joined UMA in late July and has quickly become an integral part of our ongoing success by covering muni municipal meetings, working with different city departments, and assisting the entire team with different projects and providing valuable feedback to our organization. So please join me in welcoming Aaliyah to the team. Yay! So over the last year, UMA has provided a plethora of services to the city of Malden and the surrounding communities. From live community event coverage like the Malden High School graduation to collaborating with UMass Boston in a citywide large scale public event to share photos and stories to be archived for future generations at the Mass Memories Roadshow. UMA also launched the In the Umaverse, a video program and podcast series, which brings together community members in a roundtable format to have a deep dive discussion about topical issues. Now, these topics have ranged from uh, LGBTQ plus identity and the importance of storytelling, uh, voices on disability, women in recovery, and more. These programs have brought varied individuals together and created connections that continue to reverberate through our community. On the topic of creating connections, Gallery UMA hosted a multimedia exploration exhibit called Mental Mapping, the Art of Exploring Connections by local artist and neuroscientist Joshua Sadinyana. The exhibit included the making of a podcast for the series of Cultural Matters in Malden and a roundtable discussion with five community members for our In the Umaverse series. We also held a full capacity art salon, which included a multimedia look behind the scenes of the artist's process using screen projection, audio files, physical maps, and AI technology. Now, UMA's core mission of offering media resources, training, and encouraging creative opportunities really shines through when we look at some of the numbers from this last year. With over 4,600 hours of member and staff facility and equipment use, UMA has provided just under 13,000 hours of locally produced programming across our three channels this last year. I think that's pretty good. So, uh, One of these programs, Controverse Poetry Open Mic, started when a local group of poets started a public open mic right here in Studio A twice a month. This highly attended program has brought many new faces and people into the facility to share their poetry and is assisting in building a sense of community around poetry and self-expression. Yeah, we can do a little clap to that, yeah. <clears throat> Over the past year, UMA has collaborated with a multitude of community organizations and groups, whether it's training groups on UMA resources like the YWCA youth to amplify their voice on issues that matter to them, 
or assisting nonprofits like the Chinese Cultural Connection, the Immigrant Learning Center, and Creative Malden in media production of community events and stories. This last summer, UMA continued its collaboration with the city of Malden to create informative content about the newly released Climate Action Plan through a professionally produced video, and interns from Malden Catholic High School wrote a well-researched Neighborhood View article and produced a related podcast episode about the plan. And our summer intern produced a series of animated social media promos to educate on what the goals are for that climate action plan. UMA also continues to strengthen its bonds of local partnership through a variety of ways, wrapping up the successful film building Malden project, assisting with a youth focused film building program over the summer, and by hosting an exciting filmmaking masterclass with award winning filmmakers Anthony Martinez, Anders Johnson, and Jamie Elliott, who shared how they were able to plan and produce EP313, a horror film that takes place in the basement of a community media center. <laughs> and it was all done on a shoestring budget. This masterclass consisted of a behind the scenes look at the pre and post production process and included the screening of two films and an interactive discussion with the crew. As part of our Malden Reads collaboration, we helped promote and lead events around the 2024 book, Being Human, which dealt with the human side of disability and the history of the disability rights movement. This also helped inform our efforts with the UP initiative through the Mass Culture Council, where we have received funding to assess and improve disability access to our programs, facility, and services. Now, these are just a few of the creative collaborations and services that UMA has produced over the last year. And as we look to the coming year, UMA will focus on expansion and sustainability. We are just starting to work on a new strategic plan focused on youth-based services, workforce development, and expanded media arts platforms. UMA is also launching a phase rollout of the community-wide event calendar, MaldenEvents.com. Currently, currently, it's in its pilot phase. UMA will work over the next year to engage community stakeholders in using the calendar to promote local events, as well as engage our community members in using the website as a one-stop shop for Malden happenings. We continue to seek out alternative funding sources to expand and sustain our operations and have the incredible opportunity to partner with Malden resident and friend of UMA, Adi Iwaduru, of Moroccan Caravan Tours to offer a unique travel opportunity taking place in February of 2025. Experience Morocco takes you on a journey across the magnificent landscape of Morocco as you are introduced to the guide's homeland in a very personal way with the opportunity to get close to the culture, meet and learn from local people. Proceeds from this unforgettable travel experience will benefit our community media organization. Finally, I did say finally, uh, through a grant from the Mass Cultural Council and Mass Development, UMA was able to hire an excellent architect firm, UX Architecture, to perform a thorough facility fe feasibility study which aims to add, expand UMA's capacity for diverse programming and community engagement by creating flexible spaces that foster creativity, collaboration, and organizational efficiency. UX is currently wrapping up the report. It should be done in the next couple of weeks, and we will be making that public. Um, but I just, we really look forward to using the information to create an open, inclusive, and vibrant cult cultural hub that fosters engagement across diverse communities. I, 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 such a beautiful line and I totally screwed it up, right? <laughs> so let me start that one again. We look forward to using the information to create an open, inclusive, and vibrant cultural hub that fosters engagement across diverse community groups, artists, and learners of all ages. And speaking of fostering community engagement, I would like to invite Anders Arose up to help us highlight and celebrate the 10 year anniversary of UMA's citizen journalism program, Neighborhood View. Right. Let's hear it for Tina. That was a long list. Is this working? <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't seem to, volume. <laughs> I'll shout. <laughs> yes, thank you, Tina. Um, so uh, 10 years ago in 2014, we launched our citizen journalism program. Um, 
I worked with Sam Beltrusis, who was who is a, who is a seasoned professional journalist. He got the program started. He built the website, and he was our editor for this program for the first three years. Now, what is citizen journalism? Our citizen journalism program has two missions. One is to provide a quality source of local news in Malden, and the second is to create a more engaged citizenry. So the stories that, so Neighborhood View is an online publication that has stories, news stories from Malden that are created by people like you and me. People who learn some journalism skills here at UMA and they report on what's happening in their, in their communities. Um, in uh, 2023, According to our site statistics on our website, Neighborhood View had over 32,000 views and over 23,000 unique visitors. Um, our stories range from politics to um, profiles of local people, events, issues, initiatives, uh, and they're written by community residents as well as each semester we have interns from journalism interns from uh, the area's local colleges and universities that work with us to produce our stories. Um, I want to announce tonight, we haven't really made it super public yet, but um, in, in back in December, we found out about the Institute for Nonprofit News, which is a national organization that um, networks the efforts of local journalism initiatives in cities and towns across the country. Um, and as we all know, uh, local journalism is disappearing, um, and so this work is very important. So we applied to be a member of this organization, and it was an extensive vetting process. Um, they want to look, they, they looked at our stories, they looked at our editor, they looked at um, the way that we were structured and the quality of our work. And in July, we found out that um, we were accepted as a member to the INN, um, which means, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, which means that we now have, we are part of a network of people doing local journalism across the country. We have access to resources, webinars, information, networking, grants, grants, um, because they really work to support um, efforts to, to be bringing local journalism. and and helping you to structure it in a way that's sustainable and so forth. So we're very excited about this new designation. Um, I wanna, I'm gonna show a short little video, we're gonna show a short video that was produced a few years ago by one of our journalists who also had a video production background. And I looked at it and, and we thought it still held up. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at that and then I'll just say a few more words about our program. So we're gonna look at that video now. Neighborhood View is UMA's citizen journalism program that began in 2014. The program trains citizens of modern to report on stories happening in their own community. These stories include local politics, events, profiles, Issues, spotlight, and local history. Student interns from the area's colleges and universities have joined our citizen journalism team to help report on local stories. For modern residents, Neighborhood View has become a quality source of local news at a time when traditional local news sources have been disappearing. Visit us at neighborhoodview.org and be sure to subscribe. You can write for Neighborhood View by joining our team. Take 
the upcoming journalism class and join us at one of our weekly meetings. So I hope that gives you a little sense of it. So we, the way um, they mentioned the weekly meetings, we meet every week via Zoom on Wednesday. Anyone can join us. If you're interested, you think you might want to be a reporter, or you just kind of want to see what's happening, you just need to email me, and I'll send you the link. Uh, it's a drop-in, and every week we discuss what's going on in Malden. Uh, we talk about stories that are being worked on. We support each other, and we think about what are the stories that are that are happening in Malden and what is the even larger story of our evolving city. Um, Neighborhood View, in addition to providing the source of local news, is also an archive because everything is automatically archived through tags. So if you go on our site and you type in COVID, you will see the stories that we did all during COVID. You will see the, you know, what the Bread of Life did and what teens were feeling and um, the neighbors helping neighbors and all of that stuff that happened during COVID, it was one of the parts of the program that we were best able to do at that time because we could do it remotely. Um, and so anything that you, you type in Suffolk Square, and, and Sharon is here. Sharon Santillo is uh, one of our citizen journalists who wrote a story 10 years ago that has had like the most views of any story, and it was about the neighborhood that was destroyed many years ago due to urban renewal. And um, we just recently did a re-look um, at Suffolk Square with another article. So um, there is, there's, there's so much there. And I love to, every week, go in and see what stories are being looked at. And it's always surprising, because it's not only current stories, but it's stories that were written five years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago, that are still being read. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it has become part of our history. So I hope that you will support Neighborhood View by um, being a subscriber, which means you get our stories delivered to your email. Um, maybe you'll catch a story that's, that's highlighted through social media. Um, you're welcome to come to any of our meetings and see what's happening. You're welcome to become a journalist. We will be offering our next class in January, but you can come before that. Um, and uh, I also want to, I want to thank, um, okay, I want to thank our, our editors um, over the years, which was Sam Baltrusis, Stephanie Shuro, and Don Stradley. And I'm pleased to also announce that we just hired a new editor, editor uh, Debadrita Deb, Deb Sir, um, who jumped in last week, and she's awesome. So we're very excited about her. And people here who have written stories, participated. I see Susie taking pictures. Um, and um, yeah, so we're excited about the future of Neighborhood View. But like everything else here at UMA, we, need, we also need people's financial support. And um, in any way that, we, that you can help this resource to continue to be vital throughout, through the future. So thank you very much. you're getting Iman again, but you're not. Uh, so I do not see Mr. James Mudge in the audience. Is James in the control room? Uh, he's on his way out. I see him right now. Uh, I, yes. Uh, uh, so tonight I have the distinct honor to present UMA's annual Legacy Award uh, this evening. Urban Media Arts Legacy Award is bestowed upon individuals, an individual or individuals in recognition, re, recognition for a substantial history of contributions and advocacy in community, media, and media arts. And this year's recipients are Edwin C. Lucy and Michael Sharon from 02148. <laughs> and we have a little video. Welcome. Mm -hmm. 
02148, the new Wednesday evening show at 7 o'clock on Channel 3. Well, this guy has been every time, and that's all that's left of him. <laughs> My guest this evening is Mike Cerrone. Uh, not not new to Malden, and certainly not new to Malden TV. Good evening, Malden, and welcome to 02148. I am your lovable and humble host, I hope, for the evening. <laughs> How long have you been chief? I've been chief since July 1st. You know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. We felt... You know, we were coming off three nor'easters. What's this thing about you getting honored? Long overdue. I love it. Well, most I'm kind of a has-been now, so it was really quite an honor to get invited to your show. Well, always keep in mind, it's better to be a has-been than I never was. Okay. <laughs> Full disclosure, I am on the board of directors with uh, and serve with Tom. And it actually had two of these colored stripes on its ribbon. And so there's a lot of history on this table in front of us. Thank you, Mike. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What you've gone through in terms of bringing the show together, I'm glad to be here tonight. Take a little bit. Salute. So this is a great treat for me, really. Well, thank you, Michael. I appreciate you having me as a guest. Celebrating their 11th year next week, 02148 premiered on October 2nd, 2013, with Ed Lucy as host and community activist Bill Thompson as his guest. Ed Lucy has been involved in producing and or hosting several television series at MATV, including The Malden Zone, in which he was one of the three rotating guests. Mike Sharon produced the series Giving Back, the Bread of Life show from 2008 through 2012, producing over 30 episodes. On May 18th, 2016, Mike appeared on 02148 as Ed Lucy's guest and was soon afterwards invited to join the production as a host. Together, they have covered a wide range of topics relevant to the Malden community, local government and politics, community events, public safety, education, local business and economic development, arts and culture, nonprofit and social services, health and wellness, the list, I mean, I, I got three more sentences here. We, it's pretty much everything. There have been over 275 episodes of 02148 produced, or 02148, excuse me, produced, which has provided over 3,400 hours of programming on our public channel over the last 11 years. And since September of 2017, over 170 episodes of the television show have been converted into podcast episodes, which have over 2,500 plays. That is an accomplishment. Congratulations. Ed and Mike, if you wouldn't mind joining me up here on the... <laughs> James? Yeah. I'm going to have James' assistants over here, too. Okay. Be careful, this thing moves on you. Do you want to say a few words? or? Well, um, I know you do. It, it brings back memories about some of the past shows and some of the people that have been involved. And... Uh, and actually, it, the credit belongs to others that do the background work because oftentimes the ones that really produce the shows aren't the guests or the, or the uh, people like myself and Michael. It's the people in the background that do the filming and the preparation, like James here, who we haunt a lot of times with phone calls. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in any event, it's uh, very appreciative of your uh, awarding the... the uh, the Legacy Award to Michael and myself having r run the show. But we had predecessors on the on the programming years ago. Uh, Joe Mokler was someone that did it a long time, Jimmy Della Russo, and they kind of laid the groundwork in some ways for the, the ones that are currently doing the show. And if I can just get one plug in, 
next Wednesday's show is going to be the type of thing that really has the benefit to the people in the community because we're having the city clerk on the show, and she will be doing the discussion about the five question re referendum questions, which is very confusing if you get your booklet from the Secretary of State, but also some of the options you, you, you have in terms of uh, 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 voting before the election day if it's inconvenient or there's other reasons why you want to do it early, and then uh, just don't do it often. You only have one <laughs> vote. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Michael? So, in recognition of the long-standing contributions to media arts, this award is hereby presented to Edwin C. Lucy and Michael Sharon in appreciation for your commitment, creativity, and unselfish dedication to urban media arts and the local community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we have your, wow. your awards right there. Oh, wow. What? Do you want to speak? You want to say something? Yeah. Well, he plugged his show. Okay, <laughs> come on in. <laughs> uh, Please. No, I just want to thank you so much. It was a wonderful surprise and an honor. And, and anytime I can be associated in any way, shape, or form with this gentleman, this dad, Lucy, it's a privilege and an honor because I have such great respect and admiration for him. Thank you for inviting me to be a host. Mm -hmm. Well, thank on you for show. saying the kind words. And, and, the cash and, envelope is in the back row. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks to everybody uh, down at UMA and previously uh, MATV, of course, been so helpful and so many people have helped uh, along the way this show. So too many to name, and I don't want to forget anybody. So, <laughs> And I have Gabriella from the Bread of Life on my show uh, this Saturday. Um, so but thanks again, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I just want to uh, acknowledge my uh, my family who took the time tonight to bring me here. My daughter Susan and my son my my son Gregory and his wife Thomasina and my younger son uh, Scott, the attorney. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, he acknowledged people. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, we can do a quick photo. Let's do it on the floor, on the ground, though. So. It's me again, Everybody back. All right, so now we're gonna to turn to our next part of our agenda. And uh, this also, this special recognition award, I'm gonna turn this now over to uh, Felicia. And so Felicia, would you mind joining me up here? Felicia. Actually, you, you come up and I'll go down. How about that, all right? Hello, thanks for coming tonight. My name is Felicia Ryan. I am the development specialist here at UMA, and I'm very honored tonight to present a special award to a member of the UMA family. She is an advocate, a longtime community member, and someone I am very pleased to call a friend. She believes in this organization and has devoted countless hours to help keep us fiscally sustained. As president of the board, she led the search to hire an amazing executive director, Tina Lagarde. She's helped us navigate through all sorts of organizational changes and upgrades, even in challenging times like COVID. I think the words collaboration, cooperation, and forward thinking come to mind. Ari Taylor is a loyal, an a loyal person, an amazing networker, and one of the smartest women I know. 
always an independent spirit. She doesn't like to be told what to do. <laughs> I have a wonderful clip of her when she was participating in an MATV class called w YWCA Teens Club Video in the 1990s. And now we're going to show that video clip. <laughs> I like being a, teen, a teenager because it's fun. But the things I dislike is that you don't like have control of your life. Your parents tell you to do stuff sometimes and you don't want to do it, but like you have to. The thing I hate about being a teenager is, is you don't have all the freedom you want. You have to do what your parents say and your <laughs> teachers and stuff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Ari has left her footprints all around Uma and Malden. Ari and I worked together on the board of directors in 2018, and we bonded over Trader Joe's cookies. I left the board, but she stayed on changing bylaws, expanding our board to include more people, setting achievable goals for the organization. Then somehow I came back to UMA and again got to work with her as a staff member in my role as a fund development specialist. She knows how to bring people together in creative and amazing ways. I have watched her as a mom encourage her kids to be themselves and really celebrate who they are as people. How she parents is also how she peoples. She encourages friends and beyond to celebrate them being themselves. She's a powerful creative force that Malden is lucky to have, a true problem solver and strategic thinker. She's also very funny and great to share a laugh with. If you know her, she's always on her phone, making Malden better. <laughs> she might double book herself, but she somehow always makes time for all of us. So Ari, if you would join me at the podium. Oh, and I got a bonus kid. <laughs> so this is the Outstanding Service Award presented to Ari Taylor in gratitude and grateful recognition of all your extraordinary service and dedication to urban media arts. We truly appreciate all your contributions. Thank you. <laughs> you say something? Uh, uh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was not expecting this, although I think I should have realized something was up when my whole family showed up. And my husband was like, you should go get your hair done tomorrow. And I was like, oh, is it gray? Can you see it? Um, that was beautiful. And I am so lucky and happy to be part of this organization and to be here for as long as I was to, to go back to the 90s when I first started. And, and Anne taught me everything. And... Um, I'm just so excited to see what everybody does in the future, and I'll still be here on the, you know, helping out and watching this organization grow. I know you're in good hands with Emmanuel, with Tina, the staff, and everybody here who has been amazing over the years. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right, picture. Just be careful. Yeah. Ready? Can you do it? One, two. All right. All right. Congratulations, everybody, to all recipients. Well deserved. All right. Back now to uh, board business. So now um, I'm going to look over to my uh, committee over here and ask for are there any committee updates to be told today? If there are none, we'll move on. Uh, for appointed seats or seats, we are looking for people. So please, if anybody in this room is interested in joining UMA and our amazing team, please, um, please, you know, stay after. We can chat. Um, our meetings, like I said, are open and televised. So if you do want to see what we're talking about on our monthly meetings, please watch. And if after that, then you start to feel the urge that you want to join, and you get that. You know you will. 
Yes, I know. <laughs> All our riveting discussions. And you get to hang out with me, right? I mean, who doesn't want to do that? Uh, nope, nobody wants to do that. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's not my, don't worry. My feelings aren't hurt. But please, uh, all joking aside, please, um, you know, please think about joining. Um, we're always looking for people, and we're always looking for community input as well. And so all voices, diverse views, everything, please uh, think about joining UMA and taking an active role. Um, with that being said, I will go to the next agenda item, which is, are there, is there any old business that needs to be brought up? Any new business? No new business. I like that. <laughs> at this time right now, I will entertain any motions at this particular point that I can't make any because I am the uh, president, but I will uh, entertain any motions at this time right now. Don't be bashful. Don't be, don't be, don't be bashful. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. <laughs> All right, on Ari's, on Ari's motion, is there a second? Second. There's a second. Are there, all right, so I guess I'm not doing a roll call. We'll just do a voice vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. There's an abstention. <laughs> I will call this meeting to close at 712. Thank you all very much, and thank you very much, thank you very much for everybody to, uh, to joining us tonight during our annual meeting. Thank you. Thank you, guys.